What's up guys, I'm Duncan and welcome back to a Talking Head video. It's been a little while since I've done one of these. Last time I took a trip back in time to my uh, old life before I started doing YouTube and I adopted my geneticist Duncan persona slapped on our lab coat and we talked biology and the dangers of fire cupping. It was a really interesting video and the dangers of sort of misrepresenting medicine on YouTube. And I did really enjoy making that and you guys seem to have really enjoyed watching it. So I've decided to step into this realm again, but now as an expert in my current field, which is YouTube and YouTube marketing. Now I'm not the biggest YouTuber in the world, but you ask around in my friend group or other Twitch streamers and YouTubers, and you will find out that I am very often the person who is advising people on sponsorships and um, partnerships with companies and getting people sponsorships. Where do you think Shofu got his Brave sponsorship from? Um, but, you know, download Brave, link down below. It's a great, it's a great browser. I genuinely believe in it, and that is important. But I've partnered with a lot of companies in my short time here on YouTube. Short time, six years. Okay, quite a long time here on YouTube. But I've partnered with a lot of companies from ASUS and Corsair and Blue and Logitech and even Elgato. All these companies that I've worked in, I've believed in. Right, I've believed in them. But there is a new wave of YouTube sponsorships uh, at the moment, and it's been going for about two, three years, so it's not that new. But anybody who's had 50, 60, 70 subscribers or more has had one of these emails from a company like Noise.gg, like Plarium or Hype Factory or AFK Creators, and they're promoting predatory mobile gacha game apps. And I could have a whole video talking about those, but I'll quickly cover that in a moment. And giving you quite a low offer for your value. If you know your value, quite a low offer at all of these times. Sometimes no money at all. They're just offering in-game stuff for Raid Shadow Legends, which why would you want it? So why is this a problem? Well, here's how it works. Predatory mobile devs know that 80% of their money comes from the whales. So they don't need that many people to play to make a lot of money. That's how these gacha games operate, especially ones like Raid Shadow Legends, which is one of the worst of the bunch because every update introduces a new broken character who you basically require to beat the update uh, content. And then it's just a cycle of forever putting money in and then the sunken cost fallacy. Well, I've put $100 in, so I may as well put $20 in for this new character. And then the next character comes out, I've put 120 in, may as well put 20 more. Now I've put 140 and it just keeps going forever and ever and ever ever. It's super predatory and the whales get caught up in it and they lose a lot of money for pixels on a screen. Um, I won't actually play gacha games, even good ones like Genshin Impact that right now is not predatory at all. I think that game would have been much better off being a $60 game. I, again, I could speak for hours on this subject. If you want another video on gacha games, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll make a full deep dive into gacha games. But just know that the majority of gacha games are very predatory. They are aimed at addicting you and then draining your finances by addicting you to the game. They're not healthy for the games industry, they're not healthy for the players, and they're certainly not healthy for the content creators promoting them. But today, we're going to talk about predatory marketing companies and how they operate. So the way it works is that a mobile app dev or a game dev will approach this company and say, this is our budget, and this is how many downloads we want, or this is how many clicks we want. And the marketing company is then responsible for contacting YouTubers. And that's why you get contacted by so many different companies saying they're representing Shade, Raid Shadow Legends. No, they've been given a budget and they need a certain number of clicks. And they think they can get that off of you by lowballing you. Like super lowballing. As in like offering me $300 to stream for two hours. Which I know my value as a streamer. I know my time is worth a lot more than that. I have done two hour streams for $1,500 directly with games companies before. With games I enjoy and believe in. So why would I play a crappy mobile? game for $300 for two hours and things like that like really poor offers and you can go back and negotiate and often get double or triple the money but the way that these marketing companies make their money is if they get those clicks for 10% of the budget they get to keep the other 90% of the budget they are given x amount of money for x number of clicks and however much they spend getting those clicks that comes out of what they get to keep so that's why they're willing to triple their money but here's where it gets messy a lot of these companies like Noise or Plarium or Hype Factor or uh, Hype Factory or AFK Creators will market themselves as management companies for creators. And they will talk to creators like they have their best interests at heart. You, you are a creator. We are here for creators. We're here to get you sponsorship opportunities. We're here to help your channel grow. We're here to help you make money. But they are not. They're not taking a 10% cut of whatever you get paid. 
They are taking whatever they don't pay you. And that's the difference between an actual manager and these companies. An actual manager will sign on and he will get you sponsorship opportunities for a percentage cut of whatever you make. These companies get the money regardless and will scatter shot it out to every YouTuber under the sun. They don't care about you as a creator. They don't care about your audience or whether your audience are getting the best thing for them. They don't want to pay you what you're worth. They know what you're worth because they know how much they are being paid per click and they are trying to give you as little of that as possible in order to maximize their own profit. They are awful companies. They should not exist. YouTube should have cracked down on this practice a long time ago, not letting them have networks and things like that to try and legitimize their companies. It, it's really messy. It's really predatory. And I genuinely, genuinely advise all creators to just delete these emails or mess with the people sending you. I often mess with them. I'll reply and I'll be like negotiating and I'll just keep putting my number up every time they agree. So they'll go, oh, yeah, I'll agree to that much. And I'm like, actually, now it's this much. And then they'll go, oh, well, maybe we can stretch to this much. And I'm like, oh, well, actually, it's now this much. And it's a lot of fun messing with them because wasting their time, as far as I'm concerned, means they are not contacting or preying on a creator who maybe knows less about the industry than me. So <laughs> I do like to mess with these companies. And I think that's absolutely fine. I think messing with them is respectable I, I i don't dox them i don't put names out anywhere uh i'm not like oh this is the guy's name here's his linkedin even though i do have the names of all these people because they email you from their real name at the company recently on stream and often i will read these on stream just to demonstrate and make my point of how predatory this practice is it's something i've talked about a lot I read out an email from AFK Creators, and I'm going to put the clip here in its entirety, including my explanation as to why I won't take these sponsorships and why I will mock them and say that they're bad. Please note that in the clip, I never once say the name of the person who sent me the email. I think that it's really bad to do that, so I'm not going to name them and try and dox them on stream. But this is the clip of my reading of the email and then a slight pause which i've edited out it's about 30 seconds and then my explanation of why okay here we go it's nice to meet you i'm reaching out on behalf of afk creators in regards to a sponsorship opportunity for the world's top rpg turn based battler raid shadow legends fuck Let's you predicted go. it this sponsorship offer is two hours of sponsored gameplay on twitch and a social post for 300 dollars. get the fuck out of here oh wait no that's not a let's go Get the fuck out of here. That's work. <laughs> That's work. There are also wait, performance wait, incentives wait, baked wait, into the campaign. Okay, here we go. So if you if you get a certain viewership, you can earn a bonus of up to fifteen hundred dollars. So eighteen hundred dollars? That doesn't sound like ten grand. Fuck off. Wait, one second. I need to reply. It's still a grip. One second. One second. I need to reply. Hey, you know we Lol, fucked up in the crib chasing no. Articuno though. There we go. I, I replied with a very I, I replied in a very professional way. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was lol no. I added the lol, alright, you know, jovial, laughing, and then no. Hey, where's your for at? Is it called there? Yeah. I keep running into Pokemon. <laughs> it's the same one from last time. No, you see if I'd said no lol, that would have been rude. Saying no lol is rude. That's that's uh that's offensive. Lol no is polite. You should have made an absurd request to see if they accepted. I, I've done that before, Blatella. I like every time I've ever reached out by by a raid, one of the companies doing raids marketing, I'm like, I want 10k. You're gonna make me play that fucking bullshit game? I want 10k. <laughs> Man, get the fuck out of my chat. What the hell? <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. I have to farm much less than you. I'm just trying to hustle, nigga. Uh, well, I put the code on stream, so, uh... That's mine. It's, only, it's also it's the only. wrong one, because that's the one Tito posted, and not the one I posted. The one I Which posted one is posted? above. Oh, there's 22 seconds left. Let me cancel it and start again. Oh, it's the same code? Yeah, the same code, bro. I need, to, I need to start okay. it again anyway, because we ran out of time, so... That's my fault. Where's my Raid Shadow Legends email? Okay, so give me a second. Don't, again. don't do the code Chris yet. Don't do the code yet. Him, uh, give me a second. I'm, Chris on the shit I'm on. Chris trying to get them rolls. Okay, but uh, use your own chats and I'll mind. 
<laughs> oh, they being scummy. It's a little, it's a little late for that. Um, to the people asking me why I won't take a raid sponsorship, I think that Gacha apps are predatory and they rip people off and they're designed to addict people and then take as much money as possible from the whales. And I don't like that that marketing strategy, so I don't support it. Anyway, um. Yeah, now after reading this on stream, I actually got a reply from the company and I, I think that's a little weird to get a reply when they're like, "Ooh, we're mad for you reading it on stream. Um, he replied, hey mate, really don't appreciate the disrespect and you reading my email out loud on your stream. If you aren't interested in an opportunity, a simple no thank you is in order. I did also reply to his email with lol no, full stop, nothing else. Here's the thing. If that was all his response was to me reading it out on stream, I'd have been fine with it. I replied with, hey, mate, in quotation marks. I really don't appreciate the disrespect of middleman companies like your own, whose entire MO is to get a marketing budget from a large predatory mobile game dev and then spend as little of that budget as possible on the creators you then have promote that game in order to maximize the profit for yourselves. I know exactly how your marketing companies operate and you're a dime a dozen. Looking forward to reading out and explaining why I respond the way I do to emails like this tonight. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Surprisingly, no response to that email. So, you know, I called him out on exactly what he was doing and he did not respond to the email. Instead, he took it to Twitter. So at the real underscore Musashi, uh, took it to Twitter. Again, I'm not gonna share his real name with you, but very interesting tweets. Imagine being this guy and a clip to a clip of the Twitch VOD without my explanation as to why I don't go for sponsorships like this just the clip of me reading the email and that's absolutely fine i'm not ashamed of having read the email out again i did not name you i didn't make this public i didn't even disrespect you by publicly shaming you specifically but it seems to have hit your ego a little bit misashi so i'm sorry that i upset you and hurt your fee wings by reading out the email he said, small streamer gets a large sponsorship offer for his size and trashes the sponsor, the agency, and brags about how much he's worth. No, I made a joke about how it's not 10K, so I'm not going to sell out my morals for less than that, which has been an ongoing joke. I've joked about how I'll play RuneScape for 10K, how I'll play My Little Pony Adventures for 10K, Raid Shadow Legends for 10K. I actually probably wouldn't do. The other two, I'd do. <laughs> but Raid Shadow Legends for 10K, it's a very predatory game. I still wouldn't be on board with that because I'd feel like I'd be selling out you, my audience, and I wouldn't do that for any amount of money, especially not less than I make in a month. Like, let's make one month's extra wage and then sell out my audience and lose <laughs> my, my income. It's just not a good plan for me. He said, this is a great way to make sure you never get a sponsorship offer again. I hate to break it to you, Masashi. I have had two Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship offers in my emails for more money than you offered me, by the way, uh, since your little breakdown on Twitter. And I've also had two more offers from legitimate sponsors, companies that I might actually want to work with, who I am now in negotiations with to get a proper fair wage from them to promote a service I actually believe in. So you may see me promoting a certain VPN in the future. I have looked into the VPN. I did my research before replying to them. I believe in them because they don't track any privacy data and they are really secure and their speeds are good and the number of servers they have is good and they seem like a really solid VPN option. Now, if the price doesn't match up or if the, what they want from me is a bit too much, this sponsorship might not go all the way, which is why I'm not naming them right now. I'm not going to give somebody free promotion. I know what I'm worth as a brand because I have a living to make too. But I do believe in them as a company, so I'm willing to discuss a sponsorship with them. I'm not going to do that if I don't believe in the product, which is something that you guys know about me and it's something that has... I built that trust over six years of running this brand, so I'm not going to throw that trust away for a single payday. It just doesn't make sense. Um, he also replied to a bunch of people. A lot of people were replying to him simping because they want sponsorships. Um, these were all Twitch streamers who average less than 20 viewers. I did look into them. I wanted to see why they would be replying so positively in the way that they were on some guy trashing a streamer and clipping something out of context. So I did look into it. Obviously, i um, a pretty petty guy when I want to be. Uh, so I looked into them. Wow, what a horrible stream in general from Vivian. She doesn't have a stream to speak of. Or Ryan's here. It's not a good look. Oh, he should be grateful for a sponsorship. Some people wish to get one. Me, for example, XD, like showing support. You also got um, this guy, Zedzav, who I did clear up, who just watched the clip 
took it out of context and talked about how damn nine hundred dollars an hour what horrible pay oh, must be not comfortable to get the bonus goals for his max payout uh, I know I would get the bonus goals. You guys have downloaded the Brave Browser like crazy. By the way, link down below if you haven't yet. And Brave Browser makes me more than this sponsorship was offering every single month. And I shouted out very briefly. So I, it's just I know my worth because I have good sponsors who I believe in. And so I know how much they've paid me. And I know this wasn't worth my time. I think that Matt Eats Mochi made a very good point on that $900 an hour. Uh, Matt is also uh, very, very industry savvy. He's been in the industry for a long time. He worked on SourceFed back in the day. He's a dev of apps on Twitch and stuff. He had, he invented the chat battle royale where the chat can sign up for an automated battle royale. All of that stuff. Excellent coder, excellent guy. Very, very much in the industry and knows it. And his reply kind of summarizes it really well. It's clearly not $900 an hour. It's leveraging all the past hours, building a content destination and brand trust and loyalty to be able to sell a pot product. If you lose that via a bad sponsorship, you invalidate all those hours of work. And I think that that's the point that I made on stream. And I didn't make it as eloquently as Matt. Matt is very well spoken. And I'm a bit of a memer and I was playing Among Us. and I was trying to focus on multiple things at once. So I didn't make the point as eloquently as Matt. But he went on and I'm going to leave the screenshots up on screen discussing it. Now, one of the things that really struck me was when... Musashi said, I was a small streamer who got an opportunity that was bigger than my value. And I think it's very interesting that this person, this professional, felt the need to belittle the size of my stream when, from what I've seen when he talks about the influencers I work with the best, all the replies and likes on that are from streamers who are significantly smaller than I am. They have significantly lower viewer bases. So it's not just insulting to me to go, oh, a small streamer who doesn't deserve this opportunity got offered a way bigger opportunity, which, one, it's not true. I know how much my stream is worth. Again, I have sold my stream and spots on my stream, advertisements on my stream for years now, and I have gotten paid much better than this for products that are much better than this. It's almost like good products working with good companies gets you good pay and they're respectful and they want to help creators and have a, a symbiotic re relationship instead of this weird leeching nastiness that these marketing companies go for. Uh, and so it's a little insulting to his existing clients who have fallen for these marketing strategies and have fallen for these really poor company practices that he's insulting the size of their streams too. So maybe he should be a little bit more professional and a bit more. And that was something he kept coming back to as well, is that I was unprofessional. But he's gone out and tweeted this out, out of context clips, with all of this information. And he's the one who made it public between me and him. So I, I think it's really interesting the, the cognitive dissonance here for him. And where he talks about a care package he got sent by another streamer and all these tweets where he's now trying to suck up to streamers again because this reflected poorly and we discussed it on Shofu stream and we discussed it on Tito stream and we were all as content creators making fun of this response uh anybody who saw the tweet uh, other than the people who wanted sponsorships were making fun of the response and sort of saying that this was not a good look and he's deleted the tweets now but he's kept my name on his twitter and oh i still think he behaved badly but i'm not gonna sink to his level mate you went so much lower than my level i read an email fully in context without naming you to describe a poor business practice to my stream and you decided to publicly try and cause a twitter war with me uh because your feelings were hurt and that's fine uh an interesting tweet from him is where he wants to do a series on how to be an influencer's manager slash agent i think if you're going to make that series masashi you, the first thing you should say is don't let them go for predatory sponsorship opportunities from companies that pretend to be a manager or agent and instead take as much profit as possible away from the content creator. That should probably be step one of that video series. But seeing as your manager slash agent uh, experience is off doing that and previously working for a good company, which was Tempo Storm, and I really hope that you didn't act like this when you were managing people for Tempo Storm as a professional esports agency. I really hope you've got a little more professionalism. Um... And that this was a slight error in judgment, if nothing else. I think this story, this personal story, which has gone on for far too much of this video with Real Masashi, just kind of highlights how unprofessional these companies are. I mean, the guy was trying to even, like, throw ad hominems. Ooh, I bet the guy never graduated high school. <laughs> I have my degree in genetics, which, if you were really a fan of my content, like your initial email said, and that you really you watch me a lot, which is what is implied by the fact that you watched my response on Twitch. 
Um, I think if you're really a fan of my content, you'd be aware of my degree in genetics from a Russell Group University. I also found your LinkedIn, Musashi, and it doesn't look like you have any education past high school, which is absolutely fine, by the way. If you want to go into the workforce straight out of high school, go into the workforce straight out of high school. But throwing around ad homonyms about never leaving high school, when you have no higher education of your own, it it reeks of desperation and it reeks of uh, just trying to get a jab in wherever you can instead of sticking to the facts and... You know, you could have stuck to the facts and you could have actually taken a high ground position here saying, I do not appreciate the way that he spoke about this, but at least he clarified and included both parts of the clip. Uh, but it kind of speaks to your personality and to who you are as a uh, manager for influencers, that your response to an influencer saying, this is not a good deal. Influencers should not take this deal. These are predatory companies and they're bad companies and they're bad for the audience. They're bad for creators. And your response was an angry email. And when you didn't get the apology you were hoping for from that email to soothe your ego, your response was to go on a Twitter tirade of ad homonyms and misrepresenting the facts by hiding parts of the clip. I think it says a lot about you. Now, why has this video taken so long to come out? Well, I wanted to give the company itself a chance to respond. So I DM'd AFK creators on Instagram. Um, I also sent an email to AFK creators and I wanted to give Masashi a chance to respond. So I almost, I also emailed him about his Twitter tirade and asked if he wanted to make a statement in this video. Because unlike Masashi, I'm not looking to blindside anybody with information or something in a public forum without giving them a chance to privately discuss it first. They did not respond. I gave them plenty of time. I've given them several days. Uh, I think at this point, we're going to leave it. But I hope that this has demonstrated what these companies are like to you guys. Like, how unprofessional they are, how poorly run and poorly managed they are, how it is just about getting as much money as possible in as short a time as possible. And some of these people are clearly aspiring content creators. They just want to be in the space in any way. And Masashi definitely looks like he's an aspiring content creator who wants to be in the space in any way. And my closing comment is, if you are a content creator and you get one of these emails from one of these predatory marketing companies, I do not blame you if you decide to take the sponsorship if the money's right and your financial situation means that it is better than nothing. But please be aware that they are taking advantage of you. Please be aware that you can negotiate with them to increase your cut normally three to four times and they will still make a profit off of you. Please be aware that they are not professional. They are not managers. They are, do not have your best interests at heart. As I think anybody who sees this interaction. If, if Musashi had my best interests at heart, he would have seen that thing. He would have seen me say, I don't like these predatory companies. And he would have come back to me and gone, no worries. I won't send you any more predatory companies. I will only send you sponsorship opportunities from the good companies we work with. But I think those companies are few and far between because those companies tend to work directly with creators. So please be aware that you are worth more than they are telling you. You are better than they are telling you and you should not sell out your audience unless you believe in the product or you need the money desperately. And I understand that some people do, but in that case, make it clear to your audience that these games are predatory. Make it clear to the audience that these games are expensive and that the microtransaction paywall is going to hit them after 24 to 48 hours of gameplay. Make sure that you have the right in your sponsorship agreement to give your honest and open thoughts about the game that you are sponsoring. Because if you do not have that right, you are selling out your audience and you are better than that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want an actual deep dive into gacha games and why they're predatory and how they are designed to addict and extract as much money as possible, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll see you guys here on the channel tomorrow or over on my live stream at Twitch tonight. Have a good one. Bye-bye.